Yo, what is going on everyone? Logic here with another video. Today is the big, big 2.0 update. There's changes to all the weapons, changes to matchmaking and region lock, or I should call it region unlocking now, changes to the UI, changes to gum ninjutsus and gum shots. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna get into all the meat and potatoes of these patch notes that they gave us. I wanna go over all the new, all the new things they added, the changes to the UI, the worldwide matchmaking improvements, gum weapon parameters that got adjusted, gum ninjutsus that got changed, and gum shots. I wanna, I wanna hit it all. With all that said, let's start from the top. This update contains even more wide-ranging improvements, adjustments, and bug fixes to further enhance your Ninjala gameplay experience. There are three main goals we hope to achieve with this update. Offering an ideal matchmaking environment, improving player experience through UI, UX, further polish game balance. The Ninjala team has recognized that the current matching environment is far from ideal and has taken player feedback deeply to heart. In hopes of offering our players an improved matching experience, we have implemented a major update to the matching system. Furthermore, we have updated elements to the UI that were hampering users to provide smoother, more intuitive gameplay. Needless to say, we have also further refined weapon parameters to allow players of all experience and skill levels from beginners to experts to enjoy Ninjala. Honestly, I like this. They're very, they're very transparent in the patch notes. Not a lot of, not a lot of developers do this anymore. Very transparent. They're saying, you know, we, we've, we've been hearing you pretty much. Like they hear us. They know, they knew that there was something going on with matchmaking. They wanted to make it better. They, they knew, and they heard the players. And they're, they're telling us in the patch notes like they understand. So that's awesome. I really like that. Okay, so let's get into our first major patch note topic which is matching on a worldwide scale. Up to this point, matching has been broken down into four regions, North and Central America, Europe, Asia, Oceania, and Japan. The initial intent of this was to prevent matchups between players located physically far away, which were more likely to suffer from lag and transmission speed issues. Since then, however, we have taken into account player feedback in particular, that it was frustrating not to be able to play with family or friends who live abroad in another country or to find opponents in one's own region late at night or at other times when the player base was reduced. To address the situation, we have now made it possible to match with players of any region provided that transmission speeds fall within defined acceptable parameters. Now that matching has been unified across all regions, we believe it will now be possible to find worthy teammates and opponents at all hours of the day, and that Battle Royale rank matches will be more rewarding. In accordance with this change, player rankings previously broken down by region will also be unified across the entire world. From this day forward, Ninjala will become a truly global competition. Please note, that as a side effect, you may be more likely to experience lag depending on the location of your opponent. Please confirm your connection speeds via the newly added lag value display and antenna icons. As general reference, a relatively smooth gameplay experience can be enjoyed with values up to 150 milliseconds, but 200 milliseconds and beyond will result in considerable lag. Furthermore, in ranked and free matches, Opponents and servers with lower lag values will be prioritized. To improve transaction speeds, we recommend that you connect with a wired connection or a stable high-speed Wi-Fi connection. Okay, so this was kind of what I feared that, you know, it's, it's cool that we're going to be able to connect with people all around the world. I think that that openness should always just be there no matter what, even if it does cause lag. But here's the thing, since we are now going to be connecting with people from overseas, we're also going to be getting that, that lag. That's why in these patch notes, they're recommending us to get uh, LAN adapters, you know, Ethernet cords for our switches. Not everybody's going to have that because, you know, Nintendo didn't put one in the dock for some reason. I don't know why. But not everybody's going to have that and not everybody's going to do that. You know, I, I did that. I went the extra mile, but I know not a lot of people will do that. And that's okay. 
but you know, like like I said, you could have the best net code ever in your in your game, but if someone's on Wi-Fi or if someone's across the world, it's still going to be really hard to have a stable connection. And that's just that, you know. There's nothing. That's not that's that's not something that's Gung Ho's fault. That's not something that's uh, Ninjala's fault. That's just that's just the way it is as of right now. We haven't <laughs> we haven't hit that that technology yet to where it's just not like that. But I'm still I'm still happy that we can play with players from all around the world. And now that matchmaking will be a lot easier to find players. So I'm happy with that. Next up in the patch notes is matching improvements. In Ninjala, matching is configured so that you are most likely to be matched with players of the same rank as you. However, when such players cannot be found, the system allows for matching with players of different ranks to avoid situations in which no matches can be made. We discussed this in the last video, remember? This was particularly an issue with Battle Royale ranked matches. With matching now conducted globally, provided lag is within defined acceptable parameters, you will now be more likely to be matched with players of the same ranked, reducing the likelihood of unbalanced matches. Furthermore, the matching settings themselves have also been refined so that it is less likely you will be matched with players of widely varying ranks. That said, there is a certain degree of conflict between our two goals of ensuring balanced matches and allowing for ease of matching. To ensure an optimal matching experience going forward, we intend to closely monitor the situation and make further adjustments as deemed necessary. Furthermore, there was an issue where the time until a room was disbanded was too long, resulting in long wait times after battles could be started with 6 or 7 players. To address this, we have shortened the time until rooms are disbanded, which we hope will lead to quicker starting battles. So it seems like they're they're trying to do more of a skill-based matchmaking setting. So instead of matching all types of players together, you know, not caring about what ranks or whatnot, just putting players together, they're trying to avoid that. They they wanna they wanna get players of similar ranks together in battle royale rank matches, or even in, in general, you know, in all, all types of modes. They want to keep that that skill that skill based matchmaking in there, but it, like they said, there it's it's kind of conflicting because sometimes it, it does take a while to to grab players of that specific rank all together because you know n you know Ninjala is not like a crazy big game you know it's still gonna have it's not gonna have that many players as some other games like Call of Duty or something you know so but you know they know they they know what we want and they're addressing the issues and that's what I like. Uh, they're they're listening and it's awesome. They're very transparent developers. Okay, this is the big one Gum weapon parameter adjustments. So this is all the gum weapons that have been changed and pretty much every single one has been changed So you'll want to hear this The Ninjala development team is dedicated to ensuring that players can enjoy a wide variety of battling styles after careful observation of winning percentages by gum weapon and weapon popularity we have implemented a host of balance adjustments. In particular, we have enhanced currently unpopular weapons such as Iron Noise, Drumbeat, Mellow A La Mode. I'm sorry, I don't I don't know French, so don't don't roast me. And the Trick Ball. And balance skate hammer and sushi axe. Ooh, get get balance. Get balance, skate hammers. Get balance. <laughs> With this adjustment, various weapons are used more than ever before. We hope that this result will be even more rewarding in Ninjala battles for all players. Okay, first up is the Epon Katana and the Scroll Blade. Charging Slash will now have an increased chance of landing a blow. Charging Slash is a quick and powerful dash attack, but due to its rushing movement, attacks very often missed and came up empty. Although the Epon Katana and Scroll Blade are popular among advanced players as well, they are particularly widely used among beginners. In order to give beginners an effective weapon that would not be overpowered in the hands of advanced players, we have raised the homing capability of Charging Slash to make it easier to use. However, the team is aware of its strength when combined with Wall Shooter, and we therefore intend to monitor winning perc percentages closely to ensure balance among gun weapons. Dude, honestly, they need to nerf that. <laughs> they need to nerf the Wall Shooter and um, Gum Launcher combo. It's ridiculous crazy ridiculous but I am super with the charging slash fix there's been too many times to where 
I'll use charging slash and like it will hit them but not hit them if you if you use the weapon you know what I'm talking about like you'll go through them and like you'll be like yo what what the heck's going on and it's it's really weird so I'm, I'm glad they fixed that and some people like there's some people already talking about these patch notes and they're saying that that's a buff that's not a buff that's a fix because charging slash was never working as intended it's not supposed to miss even when you're right there so that's that's not a buff that's just a fix so next up is the drill beast and the corn bow I, I don't know why it's called the corn bow it's called the corn bat but it's okay it's 5 it's 5 a.m. in the morning and I am just like super okay with that so it says here the amount of players ninjutsu gauge increases when landing back attacks has been reduced Previously, it was set to offer increased ninjutsu gauge gains when successfully landing back attacks. But, after observing disproportionately high use and winning percentages, we have reduced this amount. Yes, yes. Uh, back attacks are still effective way to build up your ninjutsu gauge, but due to the lower turnover rate, you will now need to attack more aggressively than before. Okay, so this is, I mean, I don't, I don't, I use the corn bat, but um, I don't too much use the drill beast. But I think this is okay. I think this is an okay nerf. I don't know. I, I don't like the drill beast. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm, I'm okay with it. But it's, I don't know. How, how do you guys feel about it? Do you think it's okay? Do you think it's bad? I'm, I'm personally, I'm okay with this. But I don't use this weapon. I do use the corn bat though. And that might mess me up a little bit. But I, I, I'm okay with that. Okay, okay, okay. Skate hammer and the sushi axe. The ability hyper boost will now increase movement speed even more. They needed that. Hammers really didn't need that speed boost. The strength of normal attacks has been reduced. The timing at which successful back attacks can be canceled has been sped up. The range of wide attacks has been reduced slightly. The following adjustments have been made to Power Buster. Cooldown time has been increased. The timing with which super armor is engaged has been delayed slightly. Attack power has been increased. Attack range has been reduced slightly. Oh man, oh man, the range really needed to be reduced. Sometimes you could be behind them and it could, it could hit you. So I'm, I'm super okay with that. With the adjustments this time, we have balanced power buster and increased the time needed to destroy drones and made other enhancements to balance this out. Power buster is an extremely effective attack and we observed the many situations in which it was able to completely dominate a wild battle. I mean, yeah, no kidding. With this latest adjustment, it will take slightly longer for Super Armor to activate, meaning you will have to be more careful with timing when you use it. In addition, to compensate for attacks being more difficult to land, they will now be able, they will now be more effective when they hit. It will now be more effective to land finishing blows in complicated situations, as well as take drones away from your, your, your opponents. I don't know why I wanted to say enemies. We believe you will observe that its explosive power has increased. The combo of Power Buster and two normal attacks will still be effective, so we believe that this adjustment will not result in significantly altered firepower in battle. Uh, all this looks good, honestly. Um, it did get some nerfs. You know, the normal attack got nerfed, but it also got some huge buffs. Like it got some huge buffs as well. This is this is it's still gonna dominate. It's still gonna be one of the one of the one of the better weapons in the game. Like honestly. So if you're if you're sad about this, don't be. Like you're still you're still gonna be kicking butt, honestly. If you if you were good with it before, you're you're gonna be twice as good now. Maybe not twice as good, but you, you'll you'll be all right. You'll be okay. This is a, this is this is a good balance patch. So up next is the iron noise and drum beat. Uh, some people say these are like the best weapons in the game. I don't know about that myself, but hey, you know if they're good, they're good, right? So let's get into it. Normal attacks have received the following adjustments. Soundwave bullets will now appear more quickly. Soundwave bullets will now begin to now will now begin homing more quickly. The timing at which one can cancel by jumping and evading has been accelerated. The following adjustments have been made to echoing scream. You will now move further when attacking. You will now move earlier when attacking. The position of sound waves generated has been altered so that it is easier for an attack to land. The weapon, Iron Noise, and Drumbeat, while effective when used for support in team battles, often struggle in Battle Royale matches. That is true. I, I've, always, I've always said that, that I've always felt like the Iron Noise and Drumbeat were really good for team battles, but they just kind of fell off for Battle Royale because they were just way too slow. 
These adjustments will make it easier to effectively use these weapons sound waves and it will now be easier to hit opponents with echoing scream. Use sound waves effectively and bring the beat down on your opponents. <laughs> But these are these are good. These are literally nothing but buffs. Like nothing nothing got nerfed on the iron noise. Um, so th these are these are going to be really good for the kit. I would like to see these weapons shine more in battle royale because that's one of the modes I play, and I don't I don't see nearly enough of this weapon. And I would just like to see that variety. So I'm I'm happy with this. Okay, up next is the ninja yo yo and the shinobi spinner, and let's see what they got. The second hit of normal attacks will now do more damage. Yo, what? They buffed this thing? Are they crazy? The homing ability of back attacks has been reduced. Oh, okay. The duration of gun buys inflicted with break attacks has been slightly extended. What? The warp timing for Yo-Yo Leap has been sped up? What? what? Yo, why are they buffing this thing? Yo, this is the most annoying weapon in the game. Bro, people that use Yo-Yos are the worst people on the planet. I'm sorry. I can't believe they're giving this thing buffs. <sighs> okay, with the adjustments made last update, the Ninja Yo-Yo and Shinobi Spinner weapons are not as powerful as they once were, and that's okay. That's okay, that's okay. But they remain highly popular. This time, we have enhanced these weapons in some ways, with the goals of making the Yo-Yo even more uniquely suited for a tricky fighting style. The reduced homing ability of back attacks will mean it will now be more difficult to hit opponents who dodge to the side. Furthermore, we have increased the damage dealt by the second hit of normal attacks to ensure that the combo damage is not reduced too much. Oh, now I'm about to throw up. <laughs> what is this? Why did they why did they buff this? The warp timing has been sped up. Uh, extended gun binds. The normal attacks will now do more damage. I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that one. They did nerf it last patch, which was like super fine. But like I mean that 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 just nullifies it now. Like it pretty much just nullifies. This is a this is a good weapon. It was a good weapon before. It was a good weapon before all the nerfs. It was a good weapon when it got nerfed, and now it's a great weapon. The yo-yo is probably one of the best weapons in the game. Incredible. Okay, so last but definitely not least is the mellow a la mode. Sorry, I don't know French. Don't roast me. And the trick ball. The cancel time for the second hit of normal attacks has been sped up. Wide attacks have received the following adjustments. The hit detection range for the first hit has been reduced slightly, and the vertical hit detection range for the second hit has been expanded. Okay. With both Mellow, La Mode, and Trick Ball, the time required to transform your foe and then do damage with a combo was quite long, making it easy to be interrupted by other players. That is very true, that is very true. With this adjustment, the tempo of normal attacks has been sped up, making it easier to land combos and defeat your opponents quickly. Okay, that's cool. I like that. I like that. Um, it definitely does take a while to take out your opponent with, with the trick ball. I use a trick ball. I don't use the donut, but um, it definitely took a while, even when you transformed them. And it just it just took a while. Sometimes you couldn't even catch up to them, <laughs> but you could just transform them again. But it, it definitely took a while. So I'm, I'm happy to see that. Uh, what, what did they say? The hit detection range for the first hit has been reduced slightly. That's that's a shame, but it's okay. I think it won't hurt it too bad. But I'm all in all, I'm okay with this. I wish the trick ball would have got the same buffs that the yo-yo got. My goodness. Okay, this one's for all gum weapons. The homing ability of break attacks has been adjusted so that homing cannot keep up with back attacks. The hit stop duration when landing a gum break on an opponent, blowing a bubble, or using an S burst has been shortened and the amount of S energy consumed by avoiding parries has been reduced from four to three. Okay, that's awesome. I'm okay with all of those. I don't really have a problem with that. I think that's fine. Can't wait to, you know, actually get into the, get into the mix. Okay, so we also have some adjustments to the gum ninjutsus, mainly the ninja tornado, and the ninja tornado got changed last update as well, so I wonder what they're gonna do now. So it says here, the time it takes to launch an attack has been shortened. Yo, yes, yes. You could be interrupted sometimes before using your, your tornado. So this is awesome. It will now be possible to attack more quickly than before, allowing weapons to be more useful in various situations. Oh man, I love that, I love that. The next one up is Punishing Blade. If you're a Drill Beast user, you know all about this. The reaction when a player is hit by an initial attack has been altered to make it easier to land consecutive attacks. The distance traveled with follow-up attacks has been increased, also making it easier, easier I'm sorry, to pursue opponents. 
the effect time of Punishing Blade has been shortened. The weapon Drill Beast, which allows players to use Punishing Blade, is tremendously popular, particularly among players from the Apprentice to Vanguard Ninja ranks. However, at ranks of Elite Ninja and above, both its winning percentage and usage rate drop dramatically. This is because Punishing Blade leaves the user unprotected when being activated. As players become more experienced and aware of this, Punishing Blade is often quickly targeted, resulting in the user getting punished instead. Even when attacks successfully hit, it could be interrupted by other players before a combo could be landed, letting opponents escape. With this adjustment, successfully landing an attack once with, once with it will make it difficult for opponents to get away, making it easier to punish them until the end. To offset this and ensure that it does not become overly popular among the Apprentice to Vanguard Ninja ranks, the duration has also been shortened. Okay, that's that's okay. Honestly, that's like super fine. I think um, those are some good buffs and nerfs, and they're gonna it's gonna make the it's gonna make the weapon it's gonna make people want to use it, but not like oh you know it's it's so strong like I have to use it. I might even give it a shot. I personally haven't played with the Drill Beast enough, so this might make it to where I want to play with it. So I am super down with that. Also, what's really cool is I think they're doing a thing now to where we can see the duration on it. So we can see pretty much how long we have until it goes away. So that's cool as well. I like that. Okay, and we also have some changes to some gum shots like Gum Searcher. Cooldown time has been reduced. Effect duration has been shortened. Currently, Gum Searcher appears difficult to use and has not been producing good results. So we have reduced the cooldown time. With the reduced cooldown, it will now be possible to set it near drones as a diversionary tactic, allowing it to be used more widely in various situations. So personally, I I am one of those players that really don't I, I really don't use Gum Searcher. So they're probably right. If I'm not doing it, I know there's another person probably not out there using it as well. So um, I, I'm okay with these buffs. I personally, like I said, I haven't used this, so I don't know what it. I don't even know what it does. And I'm supposed to be like the guy that that knows it all, but I have no idea what it does. I don't even know. So um, and it's it's mainly because it's on a weapon that I really don't really like. So it's it's that's one of the main reasons. There's also one thing that says. All gum shoots, all gum shoots can now be canceled by specials. So that's cool as well. That is very cool. Okay, that's it for all the weapons and gum shots and gum ninjutsus. That's all the, the meat and potatoes. Now we got feature additions and adjustments. And the first thing that it starts off with is UI improvements. We have implemented a number of improvements to the Ninjala UI. A parry guide, a HUD, an icon has been added to indicate a big weapon wins out over a smaller weapon with the same attack. This adjustment will make it easier to tell when a parry was won or lost normally or due to, to weapon size. When choosing your parry attack with a super armor effect in the event of a tie will be indicated as such with an icon. After choosing your parry attack, when a tie results in super armor being activated, this will be indicated with an icon. Certain yo-yo and hammer type weapons offer a super armor effect in the events that you and your opponent choose the same attack. This UI modification will make it easier to recognize which weapons offer this effect as well as when it's activated. So that's awesome. They're pretty much just, you know, giving us new icons just to tell when we got beat out by a big weapon even if we had did the same move. So that's cool because you don't you didn't really know before it just gave you the oh you lost icon. So they're gonna be a little bit more transparent with that. And it's it's always nice to have that information, even if you do lose and it gets you tilted a little bit. It's just nice to know. Uh, UX improvements, I don't know what that is. I don't know what a UX, I know what a UI is. I don't know what a UX is, but I'm, I'm with it. It sounds cool. It will now be easier to understand the current matching situation in the standby dojo. The remaining number of users still preparing in the lobby will now be displayed. When everyone is ready, it will change to a message indicating that the battle will begin soon. The initial list is displayed after selecting room battle has been changed to include team battles. In the event that players have formed a party, it will now be possible to see which players are currently partied with each other in the matching lobby and elsewhere. The initial uh, cursor position for the matching confirmation screen has been switched to yes. Yes, no confirmation windows can now be closed with the B button. Okay, so that's cool. It's just you know, some lobby improvements, uh, you know, just before the battle starts, 
just to see more information what's going on that's cool i like that i think that's something that's not per se needed but it's just nice to have that information out there so very cool very cool okay this is other additions and adjustments the remaining effect of duration of punishing blade is now displayed on screen which is awesome the attack range of echoing scream has been adjusted to that that it matches the range of the visual effect the reverse mode camera setting has been altered so that it no longer affects gyroscope controls when crafting weapons by pressing the ZL and A button simultaneously, the gun will automatically expand to the maximum possible size and create a weapon. At beginner levels, the message, find a drone and defeat it will now appear at the start of the battle. At times when you are unable to blow a bubble, an icon will now be displayed to indicate the situation. A number indicating transmission speeds will now be displayed at the start of battle and on the results screen. The positions of the standings and detail result buttons on the results screen have been altered. The player info screen has been adjusted to show level EXP and rating gauges. The chapter reward screen in story mode has been changed to show obtainable rewards and the conditions for obtaining them. The disbanding time limit for Ninjala has been reduced from 150 seconds to 70 seconds. Okay, we, we made it. This is it. This is the last of the patch notes. This is the last little uh, main topic here. It's called resolution of known issues. An issue where camera speed would unnaturally increase when performing certain actions while piercing mixer was engaged has been resolved. An issue with the Melo Le Moda and Trick Ball weapons where defeating an enemy with a normal attack or back attack blast would not result in an E-Pawn even if the requisite conditions were met has been resolved. An issue where player face icons did not display properly has been resolved. An issue where banners did not display properly when at your base has been resolved. An issue where story mode chapters rewards were not properly displayed has been resolved. In addition to the above, additional refinements and bug fix have been implemented to ensure a smoother, more enjoyable game experience. And then all this other stuff is kind of just like fluff, like updating to version 2.0 is mandatory, download the update, sufficient free space, all that, you don't really need to hear that. But um, what do you guys think? Pretty, that's, that's a lot of information. That is a lot of stuff. This video is probably going to be longer than most other videos, even trying to splice it up and do stuff. But I think this is kind of cool, man. This is awesome. Uh, I still need to go over it just a little bit more, but this is, this is real cool. I can't wait to actually sit down and play. It is five in the morning right now. And after I make this video, I'm about to head to bed, but <laughs> um, I, I am excited to play. So with all that being said, just, um, let me know what you guys think. You Are you sad that your weapon got nerfed? Or are you happy that your weapon got nerfed? Do you think some nerfs were unwarranted and some buffs were unwarranted? Let me know. I'm I, I'm dying to hear what you guys think of these patch notes. Also, one other thing I just want to get off my chest is, hey, if you if you got a friend or somebody out there that doesn't play Ninjala or somebody close to you, try to, try to um, you know, try to tell them about it. Try to tell them about Ninjala. Say, hey, man, you should play this game like it's real cool like you know we really we really could use like those those extra players or you know somebody even if they don't stick around like just you know at least you tried right so just let people know about the game tell them about the game tell them what's up about it you know be like hey yo ninjala is cool baby let them know <laughs> and uh see where it goes it could it could be you know it could be real enjoyable for them but uh, I'm, I'm just rambling <laughs> i'm just going on about nothing like always if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps your boy. Uh, this has been Logic, and I'll see you guys in the next chapter. Take it easy.